All right, my Aquarius friends, how are you today? Aaron here bringing your monthly horoscope for October of 2020. We've got an amazing month ahead. An amazing, amazing, amazing month. Very transformational month, okay? A lot of fate and destiny connections aligning us up here. Align the universe aligning us up and lifting us up, freeing our karma, freeing this baggage, freeing this weight that we've been carrying, freeing our minds of clutter, of negativity, of doubts, and aligning us up and putting us in the path that we need to be on, okay? We've got Mars retrograde right now. We're going to have Mercury retrograde by the 13th, okay? Venus is going to move two signs this month, all right? There's a lot of energy going on. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of things happening, but there's not a lot of things that are happening fast. But at the same time, nothing is happening slow. Everything is in perfect order as long as we stay in our lanes and surrender to the flow, Okay, a fun little little poem that kind of came in through this looking at these charts and it's like, OK, here we go. We're starting off today right about in. Let me see. Uh, in two minutes from right now, we've got a full moon in one minute from right now. We've got a full moon. Uh, so by the time this gets out to you, full moon, happy full moon, everybody uh, in, in the sign of Aries. Let me show you your chart. Let's get into it. All right. So we got the sun here in Libra. Okay, in the ninth house, about travel and education and philosophy and higher learning. Okay, so maybe there's a lot of learning going on, going back to school or taking a course, taking a class. And this full moon here conjunct Chiron down in your third house is about your information, your wisdom, your knowledge. Okay, and we're, we're conjunct Chiron here. This moon is conjunct Chiron, Chiron opposing the sun. Okay, so the sun is illuminating. We're coming from this place of gathered collective wisdom. Okay, and this is healing your personal wisdom and an emotional need to open up. All right, you see how this is working here? So that means, which, which is interesting because collectively, the south node, you know, being in Sagittarius, this is, this is almost very reverse of what the south node is, is, is saying in, in general. Okay, but for you, this is saying don't go with the flow of everybody else go to your own, march the beat of your own drum, okay? Uh, so this is saying there is a group collective of, of thought or a group collective of ideas or concepts that is shining the light on you and your knowledge and your wisdom and you're opening up here and, and finding new ways um, of expansion, okay? New ways of learning or healing, healing your mind, healing your words, how you're communicating with other people. Mars is taking a rest right now in the third house, okay? So there's not aggressive communication, not aggressive. And, and how we're dealing with communication, how we're dealing with information that's been given to us is all changing. And we're able to take this new gentle approach to it, gentle approach to our communication, where we don't have to be snappy right back or or come up with this next quick-witted thing, you know? And you're the, you're the uh, fixed air sign, you know, visionary, futuristic thinking air sign, you know, that, that's got everything kind of figured out. And this particular full moon is saying there's a lot of answers here that the collective has that's going to shine light on your wisdom and your knowledge and open up to your healing. OK, so a very, very powerful full moon right off the gate here today on the first. Now, on the second, Venus is going to leave your relationship sector leave your seventh house and join into your eighth house okay what's mine and what's yours we're going to find value in in some sort of collective project okay some something's going on here where it's like okay you know i've got to be focused and virgo here is about the services that we're providing with one another okay so venus is saying i'm bringing value and i appreciate okay and i love that we can do this together with one another this is not a solo journey for you okay Really cool. Um, on the eighth is when the magic happens, and you have all of this twelfth house energy. Okay, twelfth house energy of karmic completions and endings. Okay, and, and tapping into the spiritual, tapping into the unknown. We've got Neptune here in the sign uh, of Pisces, home. Saturn, home in the sign of Capricorn, and these two starting on the eighth of October till November twenty third are going to be creating a septile. All right. Now, I cannot express to you how magical this is. I cannot express to you how amazing this septile is between Saturn and Pluto or Saturn, Saturn and Neptune. OK, because Neptune is our creativity, our dreams tapping into the unknown. 
okay manifestation the the spiritual realm it's one you know it's in the heavens all right heaven means sky whatever spirit the spirit realm and bringing and embodying the spiritual nature into this physical life okay we're manifesting our dreams into this physical life okay and then it gets a it gets a little bit of bonus here so this has already happened twice this year which is again this is something that doesn't happen for about another five to seven hundred years i don't have the numbers in front of me right now but it, it's irrelevant it's literally about seven generations before this connection will ever happen again in the respective home signs okay this is rare this is for you this is for you to learn your lessons this is for you to free your karma Okay, this is karmic completions and endings. A lot of this energy will leave by December. Jupiter and Saturn will be gone by December. And they're going to conjunct here in your first house on the 22nd. Okay, that's December. We're in October right now. So this karmic uh, entanglement, this freeing of karmic baggage, okay, is very important for the journey ahead. Okay extremely important and uh, capricorn earth sign cardinal earth sign that can be difficult okay the river will change the the flowing water of the river will change and, and cut a rock you see what i'm saying water will cut a rock with its persistency and consistency okay so this flowing river here of pisces and neptunes and dreams and creativity okay connecting here with saturn the laws of the physical world the laws of our reality all right manifesting okay so this is manifesting things behind the curtain clearing this karmic baggage and allowing you to fulfill your destiny and in a certain way this has to do with money the things that you value okay bringing abundance of of, of uh, finances abundance of, of stability into your life during this time as well Saturn is going to create this septile down here to Uranus Okay, Uranus has been creating a septile to Neptune. These septiles are fate and destiny. And we have Saturn septile to Uranus. Okay, so this is extremely powerful. The three of these planets are all working together. Okay, home and family life and breakthroughs. You know, maybe you're going to have the best relationships with your, your partner, your husband, your wife, your mother, your father, your kids. Okay, this is time for that uh, vulnerable communication from a deep you know, deep place of communication to allow that to come through. Ego is put to rest. Okay, so we're not fighting. Our swords are put down. The armor is put down. We're open. We're able to communicate and we're allowing to change our lives and allowing this new abundance of money and finances and, and uh, security to come into our lives. Okay, really, really, really cool. So that's the 8th and that lasts until the 23rd of November. Huge. On the 13th now, we're going to have Mercury retrograde in your 10th house. This is where the shadow work really, really begins. We're already starting to do the shadow work with Mercury up here in Scorpio in general. But when Mercury retrogrades, it's time to rethink, reevaluate. Okay? Well, this is something about career. Okay? Something about career is going on here. And why are we reevaluating? Why are we rethinking this? You know, this is up to you to determine what's going on in your life. At the same time, Venus will be in your 8th house of shared resources. Right? So there's a the value of collecting of a collective of other people, of you working with other people. Okay, Sun has been here in the ninth house in Libra about our relationships with other people, um, and, and our shared knowledge. Okay, Mercury is going to retrograde. This is a positive thing. This is nothing to be negative about. This is nothing to scare. Nothing to be fearful of. Okay, part of this is maintenance. You know. The computer's gonna, is the computer gonna break? Is my car gonna break? Is my, are my bones gonna break? Is my body gonna break? You know, is my email gonna be sent? It's just like, are we staying on top of things? Are we rushing things? Are we, are we maintenancing? Are we taking the time? You know, one of my favorite Kundalini books is, uh, what is this, uh, the, uh, the handbook to the human body. You know, it's, it's, it's got a picture of a car on it, Yogi Bhajan. It's like, uh, you know, this, this body needs maintenance. Our communication needs maintenance, right? How we communicate at work needs maintenance. How we communicate to other people, and especially if we are the power of authority. This is very important for you as Mercury is in your 10th house, Scorpio, 10th house. You know, if I'm in a position of power and I'm in a position of authority, do I use my authority? Do I use my power Positively or do I use it negatively? Do I use it to oppress or do I use it in a positive way to delegate 
and, and work with the other people. Well, I value the other people. Okay, this is Venus here in the eighth house. I value what we have here collectively. Let's say if we run a small business together and I'm the boss, okay? I'm the boss. And you're, you're a co co-worker, but, but at the same time, if I'm the boss, how am I using this power of authority? How am I communicating with you? Am I empowering you and lifting you up or am I knocking you down and making sure that you know you're my subordinate? Okay, so this is part of our shadow work that we're getting into and it's unique to all of us. It's unique to much, unique to our own. If you'd like a personal reading so I can see your actual chart, feel free to reach out. The email is in the link below in the description box. All right, so 13th, Mercury retrograde, very positive. Okay, this is our shadow work that we're doing that frees our karma, that allows this financial abundance to come in and, and happy breakthroughs in, in home and family life. Okay, and changing of tradition as well. On the 20, oh, excuse me, the 16th, 13th Mercury retrograde, 16th is the Libra new moon. Okay, Libra new moon here in the ninth house. This is again about collective information, collective knowledge, uh, and a need, a new, new beginning, a new beginning as far as your wisdom goes, a new beginning as far as your travel, a new beginning in the balance that you bring into the lives of others. Okay, this new moon, new beginning on the 16th is really powerful. It's very lovely because it's even keeled balanced. And while we have Mercury retrograde and Mars retrograde, Again, Mercury is going to be able to communicate from the depths of the soul, is going to be able to communicate from a place of vulnerability while we're bringing uh, balance into our relationships and balance in our communication as far as the wisdom that we're sharing with one another. Okay, Mars retrograde as well is allowing the ego mind to, to, uh, to take a break, allow the aggressive nature of ourselves to relax, okay, and bring, again, balance into our lives, okay? Uh, then on the 22nd, the sun is going to leave Sagittarius and enter the sign of Scorpio. Enter your 10th house. The sun is going to shine its light here in Scorpio. And by you doing what you do, you know, you got no first house energy here at the moment, but you will. You know, come December, a lot of things are changing. Um, so the work that you're doing right now is going to be seen. It's going to be valued. Okay, it is valued. And it's seen that you are willing to go to those depths. Okay, you're willing to go to that place that's necessary to get the job done. Okay, really, really, really cool. So then on the 25th, Mercury and the Sun are going to conjunct together. Okay, and this conjunction will create a septile, fate and destined to south node, release. Releasing of energy, releasing of um, the thoughts of, the, you know, this could be my peers. Okay, my, my, uh, my community. Releasing of, of whatever this community thinks, hey, uh, you know, I didn't think you could do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I did it, and I don't have to rub it in your face. You know, I'm able to communicate differently. I'm able to communicate differently in this place of power and authority. Okay, as well, this Sun-Mercury conjunction is creating a septile down here to Chiron, which is healing. And third house is about communication, information. Okay, so you see how these three play together. So Sun, Mercury, Conjunction, Septile to Chiron, Chiron, Septile to the South Node, releasing, healing, releasing, healing communication, releasing negativity, releasing old baggage, old weight, things that no longer serve, and North, uh, South Node, Septile back here to the Sun and Mercury. Okay, and again, this is about being vulnerable, being open and being communicative in the workplace, in the business front. This isn't the boss that's too cold uh, to, to be able to communicate with his employees, her employees, okay? This is the boss that's being open and is understanding, empathetic, and caring, okay? So that's on the 25th. Then on the 27th, Mercury retrogrades out of Scorpio back into Libra, and Venus, the same day, will leave Virgo and enter. Well, look at that. Thanks, Canon. <laughs> Venus will enter the sign of Libra. Mercury enters the sign of Libra. Sun's going to be here in the 10th house of Scorpio. Okay, so again, this is about revisiting information, revisiting knowledge. Venus is bringing a value to this knowledge, this collective knowledge, this collective information that we're gathering together. Okay, so there's a lot to be learned this month, and there's a lot of vulnerable open communication this month, and specifically with Mars retrograde, Mars conjunct Eris here, and Chiron all present in your third house. 
and this all being the third house of Aries, this is how you communicate with the world. Okay, with so much 10th house energy, this is about you being the boss, you being the, 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 in the position of authority. Okay, and when you're in the position of authority, how do you want to come across? Okay, now there's a fine line, certainly, of, of, uh, of, of leniency that, that gets stepped on and walked on, and then being harsh and brash and like, hey, if you cross this line, you're fired, you know, however this plays out into your life. But there, there's a fine balance in that and wearing that hat. And it's up to you this month to try to figure that out, okay? How to be a warm, compassionate, empathetic, caring boss, but at the same time, um, by, by communicating in a way that you get the respect that you deserve by respecting other people as well, okay? So that they, they will show up on time to work or they will do everything fully without taking advantage of something. And that's not something you need to worry about. This is some of that um, preconceived negative thoughts that were manifesting into a scenario before the scenario exists, you know, if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. I had, a, I had an old boss that said that to me all the time. It's like, dude, you know, do you know me? I'm like, I'm such a hardworking guy. If you give me an inch, I'm going to take the inch and I'm going to get right back to the grind. You know, but if you give me a five minute break, I'm going to take my five minute break. But if you think I'm taking my five minute break, I'm going to turn it into 30 minutes because I'm lazy and I just want to collect a paycheck. You're wrong. And you're, you're now projecting your insecurities and your emotions and your worry and your doubt and your fear onto me. And this is creating separation in our relationship. I don't work for that guy anymore. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. Uh, anyway, uh, then finally, on the 31st, we've got a blue moon. All right, on Halloween. A blue moon on Halloween, which hasn't happened in a long time. Okay, And this blue moon, we're conjunct Uranus. So cool. So the sun's going to be here in your 10th house again vulnerable, being open, uh, the depths of your soul and, and this, uh, the drive of uh, uh, sexual fantasies, the drive of, of power, the drive of, of money and shared money and all this, you know, and authority and yeah, all these lovely things that are going on here and recognizing these things. And where does our home and family life meet up with business? Okay. This is the balance for the full moon at the end of the month. Okay, and we want to have this breakthrough. We have this Eureka happening here for the next five years or so with Uranus moving through your fourth house of Taurus and shaking things up and, and what was traditionally a certain way and, you know, shaking up the patriarchy and flipping the whole script here. And we have to uh, respect Uranus and what Uranus does, okay? Again, it's a slow-moving planet. It's not going to happen fast. But it's not happening slow either. It's happening exactly as it needs to. Okay. So every time the moon comes around here, if you follow me on the monthlies, I talk about this emotional release happening. Okay. And this is a balance for you between going into these depths of the Scorpio, these depths of these deep emotions. All right. Communicating on a large scale, communicating from a place of vulnerability and openness and healing, and connecting with home and family in whatever necessary way. Okay, to shine the light on that completely and to understand the balance of home uh, and work life between mom and pop shop and big business. And where do you want to be? You want to be the big business shop that uh, charges, you know, <laughs> a, a, an arm and a leg for your services or are your services available? Okay, are your services available for the masses at a reasonable price? Okay, this is an interesting conundrum that's going to uh, play out for you, my futuristic Aquarian friends, okay? Nothing's happening fast this month, but nothing's happening slow. Everything is perfect, and as long as I stay in my lane and surrender to the flow, surrender to the flow, surrender, surrender, okay? So much good energy going on, so much life-changing energy. Again, if you want a reading from me, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to do it and shine some light on these shadow areas as well in your personal chart. Have a beautiful month ahead, and we'll see you tomorrow.